Hey, everybody, it is the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and uh, my buddy, Pastor Richard's back. How are you doing? Hey, good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you, too. Uh, we're recording this. Uh, you're, you're not going to hear it until after Thanksgiving, but we're both gearing up for it, and that comes with sort of all of the last-minute family stuff. But uh, we're going we're gonna to make a, a show for you now, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I can. I can uh, we, we actually have uh, a couple gals are putting on a Thanksgiving meal tomorrow night, and so we have four turkeys, uh, right? So if you go up my door here around the corner, there's four turkeys cooking in our ovens. We have four ovens here at the church. And they said, Pastor, by this afternoon, you're going to smell it. So I'm like, ah, oh, gosh, all afternoon, Tuesday. And then tomorrow, yeah, so today's Tuesday, we're recording. And then all day tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm going to have to smell this turkey. It's uh, That's a good kind of uh, problem to have, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I get wild with it. Um, So so we're going to we're gonna sous vide this, the turkey, and then we're going to smoke the turkey. And then we're going to oh, yeah. pan through the turkey. Um, And it's, it's way over the top, but it, it turns out all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we did one year with some friends. We did the uh, the turkey and the peanut oil. Okay. And oh my goodness, you know, it was not only did we get to play with oil and fire, but it was delicious too, you know. So uh, it was a good time of year. You get together with family and eat food and watch football and all that. It's all good. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. If you're listening to this, I hope yours was good. Um, so we're, we're going to tackle the the sort of the, the usual. What does Jesus say about? And uh, you had a good one today. What does Jesus say about wrath? Yeah. Right. Happy Thanksgiving. Wrath. Right. I love uh, it. You know, but this is a topic where I, I guess when I was a kid and, and even maybe my adulthood understanding, think of this idea of wrath. I just 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 saying it right. You say the word wrath. It just kind of like, ooh, it just kind of gives you like a little bit of chill in your, your bones. Right. Wrath. Right. And when I think wrath, I usually think uh, darkness and I think what uh, uh, the Grim Reaper. Right. You know, and, and with that uh, sickle and all that kind of stuff. And 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 uh, we think wrath, we think uh, earthquakes and the grinding fire coming down. And, yeah. Fire, and lightning bolts, all that kind of stuff. But as we think about wrath, as, as wrath is actually defined in, in, in the epistle of Romans, and we also see this elsewhere in the Old Testament and the Gospels as well, that oftentimes wrath is displayed in the Lord. He does what? He just simply simply lets us do what we want. It's just like, fine, if you want to do that, his wrath is what? Relinquishing that and saying, fine, giving us over to our own desires, letting us do what we want, which, as I shared with you earlier, that that terrifies me. That absolutely terrifies me to think that 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 God would add, unleash his wrath on Matt Richard to let me just do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. God help me. God help everyone else. Oh my goodness, that's terrifying. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a way that that he punishes and disciplines is he he gives us what we want. Um, and, and it sort of recognizes when we we say you know um, well uh, thy will be done. Uh, we when we're in charge of things, bad things happen. Uh, you see it in in the Old Testament. Um, so so the the nation of Israel was like, you know, about this whole faithfulness thing. I, I sure. Okay. But really what we want, we want a powerful leader. I, I, I'm not concerned about faithfulness. I want power. Some put me in the most powerful nation there is. And God's like, that's a bad idea. Yeah. But, yeah. Hey, here's some Babylonians. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's not like he's a genie. It's, it's not like, you know, he's trying to sort of corrupt the wish and you just have to sort of ask it just the right way so that he has no out. God is not looking for a reason to, to pour out wrath upon you. In fact, he's looking for every reason to, to show forth mercy. But if you'll have nothing to do with this, then he simply says, all right, if you really want to be God, try it. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, and, 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 that has been my prayer. I, I would say that since coming to St. Paul's Lutheran Church here, my prayer has been, uh, I've talked to a lot of people and, and, and we, we we got a good church, a lot of neat people here, uh, faithful church, feel really privileged. And uh, I just said, you know, my, my prayer has been, Lord, help me not to mess this up. You know, don't give me what I want. Uh, discipline me. And that's, it comes back to discipline too, right? Sometimes when we feel the discipline of, of, a, of a parent, right? The discipline of somebody else in authority, we can often look at that discipline and we can uh, chastise against it or get upset about that discipline. But ultimately discipline uh, when it's done rightly is, is for our benefit and our good. And so our prayer should be that the Lord will constantly discipline us, uh, discipline us due to our old Adam, our sinful nature, what we want, um, so ultimately that our, that our unholy trinity of me, myself, and I doesn't get what me, myself, and I want, uh, cause if we're given what we want, it's usually the destruction of ourselves and the destruction of our neighbor, uh, sin itself. I mean, we, we talk about this whole idea of sin too. Sin, sin is when we cave inward on ourselves and we, we, we cave in on what we want. 
Uh, we become all these these words that are being flung around. We become narcissistic. We become thirsty for power. We 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 step on the little guy. Um, we we become narrow minded. I mean, all these things that can happen when we do what we want to do. And thankfully, the Lord will discipline us uh, many times to discipline us to bring us to the end of ourselves so that we might see our need for Jesus and the forgiveness of sins. And that's what the gospel does. The gospel turns us away from ourselves out to Christ and his good gifts. And then uh, once that has happened, as we've been given these great gifts, uh, I love it how it states in our confessions that the Holy Spirit uh, gives us holy impulses. We get holy impulses to serve thy neighbor, to look outside of ourselves. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, uh, my prayer has been, uh, Lord, do not turn me over to what I want, uh, because if that were to happen, I would, I would destroy everything. And I have a feeling you would do, do the same thing, you know. Yeah, and and the the problem is, I would be very content with it. it it's actually something we see with with addicts too. Um, I, you you deal with somebody who's genuinely struggling with with substance addiction, and um, you you catch them not not in a in a rare sober period, but if you catch them laying in a gutter, drunk, ask them how they're doing, and they're doing fine. They, they really are. You, you can look at the situation outside of sort of the lusts of the heart and, and say, this is terrible. But in that moment, when, when you're sort of capitulated on, on that, focused on that, uh, everything gets messed up. Uh, it, it, it's awful. Well, and I mean, if, if this idea of a sin too is, I mean, you know, we, we, don't, we don't sin to, uh, you know, destroy our health and blow up our relationships and ruin our finances. Nobody sets out to do that. Uh, we believe the lie of sin that if I do this sin, it will enhance me, it'll be better, or it'll satisfy me, um, whether it's my greed or lust or, um, you know, whatever it might be, gluttony and so forth, you know, whatever we do, we, we thirst after these things. And so we do these sins with the idea that's going to advance me or improve me or to, to give me more peace of mind. And, and we go down that we, we, we taste the fruit and we taste the sin and we, we keep on consuming and in the end, it comes back to bite us. And that's the great, that's the great problem. And so, uh, yeah, Lord God, we can cry out, uh, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. Um, also, we can, we can cry out, Lord God, give us eyes to see and to discern and understand sin, uh, not on the basis of my own appetite or sinful appetites that we all have, but on the basis of your word of God, to trust your word, that even though my sinful nature might want to do this, that I can say, no, uh, God's holy writ, his word says that this is wrong and this will be uh, not beneficial to me, but hurt me and that I may repent on the basis of God's word and what God's word says about that sin and repent of my desire for doing that. And so then we would be maintained in the comfort of reality, the comfort of truth of who Jesus is. Um, and not only that, but but health for ourselves and our neighbor um, and not be given over to deception, to deception of sin. Right. God's word is not simply meant to make you feel guilty, but it's, it's a perspective that is outside of yourself. So that outside of that moment where I'm sure this is a good idea, you can sort of check with somebody who's been around for a little while and see how it works out in the past. And the scriptures are clear here. This is going to this is going to break stuff. It's going to feel real good in the moment, but it's 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 not actually the, the piece that you're looking for. Uh, but what's what's wonderful, though, is when we talk about wrath, um, you, you use the word discipline um, and, and you also use the word punish. Uh, and we hold these a little bit distinct, uh, at least as Christians, because, well, my sins were punished upon the cross, but I'm also still glad that God disciplines me, that, that when God exercises wrath on me, it's not because he wants to see me condemned, but, but so that I would actually look out of myself. I, I would be sort of, you said, curved in so that I would be uncurved, uh, yeah, so that I would yeah. lift up my head and, and, and again, hear not just the law, but also the precious gospel. Yeah, you know, and I think you know, we talk about this all the time in confirmation here at St. Paul's. We talk about the Ten Commandments, and and oftentimes we can understand that the Ten Commandments maybe are like God's ten ways to be a killjoy in life. <laughs> um, but the reality is that that the Lord God gives us these Ten Commandments because He wants to protect these good gifts. And so, when in confirmation we go through uh, the commandments, you know, starting with the fourth commandment, we work our way up and say, fourth commandment, I say what, uh, mom and dad, honor mom and dad, and the kids say authority, and and God's attempting to protect protect the gift of authority. Uh, you know, fifth commandment, uh, thou shalt not murder, protecting the gift of life. Life is a gift. God wants to protect it. Uh, then we go through uh, adultery. They say marriage. God's protecting marriage. Uh, thou shalt not steal, protecting the gift of property. Uh, God's protecting the gift of good reputation and contentment and so forth. There are these good gifts that God wants to give to us. And these 10 commandments are to protect us and uh, from our old Adam, what? 
wreaking havoc and destroying these gifts that God gives us. He gives us the gift of authority, life, uh, marriage, and a family, and, and uh, property. He gives us a good reputation and contentment. All these are wonderful gifts that he gives to us, and our sinful nature just can't help us. Our sinful nature is kind of like this... Um, it's like a little kid at the beach who sees that uh, sees that sandcastle and he just wants to what? He just wants to step on it. He wants to destroy it. That's our old Adam. And oftentimes uh, to discipline that old Adam and to to bring us to the end of ourselves, sometimes uh, the Lord God, he, he, he lets back and his wrath is revealed that he what? Allows us to destroy it. And then we are brought to our knees crying because we, we messed it up. And then ultimately that we can be brought back to repentance and forgiveness of sins in Jesus and set a right and, and 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 understand these good gifts that lot the Lord God longs to give to us. Right. You mentioned drawback as sort of the, the discipline. Um, and this is how you can tell that it's it's meant for something. Um, that that ultimately it, it's that he can draw nearer than you would allow him in your in your own sin. And, and that it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, it, it's it's that that God would draw near that when when everything that we have thought would save us has actually made things worse. He would actually lift us back up and set us on a better path. The only place where he steps all the way back, that that's what hell is, that that's what condemnation is. And Lord have mercy. It's the idea that I would be so far away from God that he would simply say, if you, if you refuse to be near me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's the beauty of this, that, uh, you know, he, he, he does not give up on us. And, and oftentimes, uh, whether it's discipline or sometimes giving us a little bit of leash to let us uh, uh, realize our fail failings and our failures, um, all of it really comes back to this idea that that our Lord God He He wants to redeem us from the wrong, and uh, you know ultimately vengeance is for wrong, but when for us as the Christian, it's what redemption from the wrong, and so uh, understanding that that His full wrath has been poured out on Christ, um, but when it comes to us. This idea of discipline, sometimes it is letting us do these foolish things so that we come to the end of ourselves to realize what, that as you, you stated earlier, that we're not God, I'm not God, and that I that I need a God, that I need forgiveness, that I need to be centered, um, not above him, but what, under him, and trusting, uh, fear loving and trusting in him uh, for all good things. Yeah, there's shelter there, so that, that's a good place to be. Uh, yeah. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us today on the drive to school. Yeah, good to see you, Harrison. Take care, my friend.